Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Today, we will continue on chapter 9, Applications of Differentiation. And our subtopic for today, we will be focusing on extremum problems. So, in this lecture 2 or 4, we will determine the type of turning point using first derivative. Therefore, at the end of the lesson, students should be able first find the stationary points. Second, students also should be able to classify the type of turning points using the first derivative test. Now, let's look at 9.2 extremum problems. So, here we are going to find stationary points denoted by SP or critical points denoted by CP. The stationary points to a given function y equals to fx are defined when dy over dx equal to 0 or f prime x equals to 0. So, this is the first derivative. Therefore, stationary point is the point when the tangent to the curve is horizontal and also the gradient of the curve at the point is zero. So here we can see two diagram. Let's see the first diagram here. If we have the stationary point x1, y1, we can see that the tangent to the curve at this point is horizontal. When we compute the gradient at this point, the gradient will be equal to zero. And it is the same for the second diagram. If we have the stationary point here, x1, y1, we can see that the tangent here is horizontal and when we compute the gradient, we can find that the gradient at this point is zero. Now, let's discuss about local maximum and local minimum. So, for the first part, the gradient change from positive, so here we have the red arrow showing upwards, means that the gradient is positive. Now, it changed from positive to 0 at A. So, here is point A. And then, it becomes negative. So, we have the purple arrow showing downwards. Therefore, the turning point at A, A, K is a local maximum. So, let's see the second part. For second part, we have the gradient change from negative to since here we have the purple arrow showing downwards, it means gradient is negative. Then it change to 0 at point B. Okay. Then it becomes positive, denoted by the red arrow showing upwards. So we will have the turning point at BBJ is a local minimum. Now, let's look at about the third part, which is fx is increasing on the set. So, now we need to find which set showing fx is increasing. So, now we refer to the right arrow showing upwards. If the arrow showing upward, it means that fx is increasing. So, here we have two right arrow. One, two. So, we have two right arrow. So, fx is increasing on the set where x is less than a union x is greater than b. So, here student, you can see that since the red arrow showing output is in this side, so we will have x is less than a. If beyond a, it is the purple arrow showing downwards. Next is x is greater than b. So, you can see here the right arrow showing upwards. So, that means on this side, fx is increasing. So, we have fx is increasing on the set. x is less than a union x is greater than b. Since we have fx is increasing, we also have the fourth part which is fx is increasing decreasing. So, fx is decreasing on the set where x is between a and b. So, here we can see that between a and b, okay, 
we have the purple arrow showing downward. If the purple arrow showing downward, it means that fx is decreasing. Now, student, let's talk about intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. So, we can say that a function is increasing if sx increases, reading from left to right, y also increases. In other words, we can say that by the definition, a function is increasing on an interval if when x1 less than x2, then y1 less than y2. We can say that as the x get larger, the y's get larger. So here we can see that two diagram here. Okay. So for the first diagram, we have the maximum point at x2, y2. Okay. So we take another point, for example, x1, y1. So now we need to compare between these two points, the interval between these two points, where the red arrow is showing upwards. Let's see. Since here we have x1, here is x2. By the definition, x1 less than x2. So here it's obey the definition. x1 less than x2. Then y1 less than y2. So here also we have y1 less than y2. Therefore, in this interval between x1, x2, it shows that fx is increasing where the red arrow showing upwards now let's look at the second diagram where we have the minimum point so we have the minimum point x1 y1 so we take another point which is x2 y2 so we read the x coordinate from left to right please remember so that's why we did not hear x1 and here x2 from the definition, we need to see x1 is less than x2. So here x1 is less than x2. And then y1 must be less than y2. So y1 less than y2. Therefore, we will have in this interval, okay, fx is increasing. You can see the red arrow showing upwards. Next, let's look at how about a function is decreasing. So, a function is decreasing, okay, if as x increases, reading from left to right, y is decreases. Okay, by the definition, we can see that by definition, a function is decreasing on an interval if when x1 less than x2, then y1 is bigger than y2. In other words, as the x get larger, the y get smaller. It's different from increasing just now. If increasing, x increases, y increases. But here, x increases, y is decreases. Okay, so now let's look at two diagram here. So for the first diagram, we have here is maximum point. So we denote by x1, y1. And then we take another one point which is x2, y2. So we can see that here is the purple arrow showing downward. Since we have x1 here is less than x2. Okay, by the definition it's obey. How about the y coordinate? The y coordinate we have y1 is larger than y2. So, y1 is larger than y2. Therefore, in this interval, we can have fx is decreasing. For the second diagram, okay, we have the minimum point. We denote by x2, y2. We take another one point on the left-hand side, which is x1, y1. That's why we did not hear x1, and this one is x2. Since we are reading the x coordinate from left to right. So we can see that x1 here is less than x2. And 
y1 here is larger than y2. So, it obey the definition here. Therefore, in this interval, okay, fx is decreasing. So, as a conclusion, we have a theorem. So, for the first theorem, we have if f prime x greater than 0 on an interval, then the function f is increasing on that interval. Second, if f prime x less than 0 on an interval, then the function f is decreasing on that interval. Next, if f prime x equal to 0 on a point, then the function f is constant on that point. So you need to remember, if f prime x greater than 0, so function f is increasing. If f prime x less than 0, the function f is decreasing. If f prime x equal to 0, f is constant. Now, let's look at the methods to determine the nature of stationary point we denote as SP or critical point we denote as CP. So, there are two methods. The first derivative test and the second derivative test. Let's look at the first derivative test first. So, method one, first derivative test. What are the steps? So, first step, we need to find the stationary point, SP. We need to evaluate f prime x equals to 0. Second step, we need to choose any one point on left-hand side and right-hand side of stationary point. For example, on the left-hand side, we choose x1, y1. On the right-hand side, we choose x2, y2. The next step, we need to evaluate f prime x on the respected chosen point. So, since left-hand side, we choose x1. So, if we evaluate f prime x1. Right-hand side, we choose x2, y2. So, we evaluate f prime x2. So, next step is graphically. Graphically, we need to see from third step. If f prime x1 is less than 0, then we will have the negative gradient on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, if we have f prime x2 greater than 0, then the gradient is positive. So, as a conclusion, we are going to have the local minimum. So, since we have local minimum, we also have the local maximum. The steps are the same. First, we need to find the stationary point, evaluate f prime x equal to 0. Then, choose any one point on left-hand side and right-hand side of stationary point. For example, left-hand side, we choose x1, y1. Right-hand side, we choose x2, y2. Then, we need to evaluate f prime x on the respected chosen point. f prime x1 here for left-hand side and f prime x2 for the right-hand side. Then, we need to see if f prime x1 is greater than 0, then we will have the positive gradient. If on the right hand side we have f prime x2 less than 0, we will have the negative gradient. So as a result, we will get the local maximum. You need to remember this step. So student, just now we are using the first derivative test in order to determine the stationary point is local maximum or local minimum. However, you should know there is a situation where the stationary point has no maximum. So here, we can see method 1, first derivative test. All the steps are the same as before. First, you need to find the stationary point. You need to evaluate f prime x equal to 0. And then, you need to evaluate f prime x on the respected chosen point. So, the difference will be here graphically. If we have on the left-hand side f prime x1 greater than 0, 
So, we will get the positive gradient. And on the right hand side, if we compute as prime x2 and we get greater than 0, it is also positive gradient. So, the curve that you will get is like this. Okay. So, here is stationary point but has no extremum. So, for the second part also, the difference is here. If we compute f prime x1 less than 0, it means that the gradient is negative on the left hand side. It is the same for the right hand side. If f prime x2 is less than 0, so it is negative gradient as well. So, the curve will be like this. So, for example, this is your stationary point, but it has no extremum.